And today we're going to be painting this beautiful painting called Emerald City. Yay. And we're going to use just primary colors, uh, red, yellow, blue, black, and white. And we're going to mix our colors to create these colors or something real close. So um, your painting won't look exactly like this one. Mine won't either. Um, but, you know, we'll still have a beautiful painting at the end. And yeah. So uh, besides the, the paints that I have, I also have three brushes, a large flat, a medium flat, and a small round. And if you have a variety of brushes, that'll work. I have napkins. I'm wearing an apron. Um, and I have a water jar for cleaning the brushes. Uh, or a water container will work. And I have my beverage. Cheers. So the first thing we're going to do, just like always, we're going to pick up our big brush. And we're going to, we're going to cover our canvas with water. And we do that because Denver is so dry. Um, and it keeps our paints from drying out too quickly. And um, just to recap, acrylic paints made out of water and pigment and a binder that is like glue. Um, and when it dries, it just dries to acrylic, which is like a plasticky, uh, water safe finish. But while it's still wet, it is water soluble and you can clean it with soap and water. But once it's dry, it is permanent. So if you have to remove it from something, it's always best to do it while it's still wet. Uh, try to blot it off or pull it off and then rub some concentrated dish soap into it so you can get it in the washing machine. Unless it's your cat, in which case you'll just have to wash your kitty. <laughs> So for the first half of our painting, we're just gonna paint the sky uh, a very pale blue, uh, about halfway down. And then we'll go in and we'll put in these white um, lines. So we're just gonna do a pale, I'm gonna take my big brush, I'm gonna pick up a little bit of blue and I'm gonna add a little water to it so it's thin. I just want a thin, light, blue background. And so I want it kind of watered down. When I do a background, uh, like a sky or whatever is in the background of a painting, I like to put it on thinly because then it dries more quickly. So I add a little bit of water so that the paint is like the consistency of pancake syrup. If it's like Greek yogurt or peanut butter um, for the background coat, it's just hard to get it thin. Um, for a quick, a quick wash or basic background. So I, I like to have it a little on the thin side. Not so thin that it drips and won't stay on the canvas, but uh, thin enough that it's easy to move around. Then I'm also painting the sides and I'll paint the top. And as I go, I'm gonna paint the bottom too.
the blue that the original artist used for this painting is an ultramarine blue and I have a phthalo blue. It doesn't really matter a whole lot to me at least, um, but if it matters to you, you could always put in about a couple of grains of salt worth of red into your blue uh, to make it a little bit more warm, a little more purpley. Um, I'm not gonna do that because I think it's just hard to get exactly the right color anyway. And I think that once, um, you know, no one's ever gonna be compared, well, they might here, but um, where you are, no one's gonna be seeing the original painting uh, to say, oh, it's not exactly the same shade of blue. Uh, so that's your call. This is a cooler blue that is a warmer blue, um, but they're pretty similar. Just not exactly the same. And I can try to lighten it up a little bit maybe. If you paint all around your canvas, that's called a gallery wrap. Um, if you paint the tops, the sides, and the bottom, and that way you won't need a frame when you paint, uh, when you are finished, but you can still put it in a frame if you choose to. So that's kind of a nice thing. Totally up to you. It does look more finished if the sides are, you know, the painting is continued onto the sides and the top and the bottom. I think I need to go down a little bit farther just to be sure I'm full halfway. And then after I get this half on, I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of white paint and I'm gonna thin it with a little bit of water too because I, I just want it to be real thin. And you could do it on a medium flat brush. It doesn't really matter actually. A medium or a large brush will work. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of white paint on a brush, very little. And then I'm going to, I want to make a white oval, but I don't want so much paint that it's really solid. I want it to be, just kind of highlight this area without being too solid. And then notice there's also some white clouds going back and forth in it. So we could do either of those first. It doesn't really matter. Uh, we could put in a little bit of white clouds but real thin, thin white paint, because we want it to just look soft and not, not too obvious, so thin. So that's pretty watered down paint. And these are just in the center area.
it's basically just adding on a little highlighted area. And then after I get those on, then I can do that oval. And it's just kind of light and not, not solid, just wispy. Very little paint. And I, I'm just gonna add water to my paint to keep it really thin. I don't want any really harsh lines. I wanna just kind of keep it light and And then maybe back and forth a bit more. Break those up. Please use this one as your guide. Right here. I'm trying to make it softer. So I probably need a little more water. But what I want this area to do is just create kind of a spotlight behind the Emerald City. So I'm painting with a little bit of water just to soften it. If this area could talk, it would say, oh. And I think I'm gonna switch to a smaller brush, but still with really, really thin white paint. I'm just gonna see if I can sketch on a little bit more of the oval because I blended a lot of it away, but I don't want it to be a hard line. I want it to just be like a soft suggestion. So I'm kind of going back and forth. And the important thing is that you like what it is. It's just supposed to be like, kind of like a halo around it, I guess.
but subtle, subtle, subtle. And then if we don't like it, we can always just blend it away and leave the sky. And Deb, if you want to unmute to, you know, visit, feel free. I just uh, thought, you know, if there's a lot of noise, uh, it might be better to keep it off, but just normal. Yeah, my phone was going off a while ago, so I know that was getting annoying. <laughs> After I get my oval on, I'm just gonna work to try to create a little bit of emerald color. And I'm not quite sure exactly what parts yellow to what part blue to what part white. When we used to paint this in the studio with live classes, we always used um, a green that comes out of the tube that way. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll have to play with our colors a bit. But it's, uh, I'm going to guess probably equal part to yellow and blue, but maybe quite a bit more yellow. I don't know. We'll just have to play. But it's definitely a little white and then some yellow and then some blue. And I would go easier on the blue to start. I would maybe start with two parts yellow to one part blue. Uh, just to see what that does, because blue tends to be a really, a really powerful pigment. Depending on exactly the kind of blue that you have. Yeah, mine's definitely taking more yellow than blue. And a little bit of white. If you have uh, lime green uh, at home in your in a tube, feel free to use it. Uh, I have a mint green that's pretty close. I'm just doctoring it up a little. <laughs> nice. When I see this picture, I can hear the song in my head of them walking down the yellow brick road. I have some old paint because I did paint earlier this afternoon and um, so if your paint starts to get thick, like peanut butter, add water to it, mix that in, add a little water. I always like to do a few drops at a time, um, but that we want to keep it, it, it's easiest to work with if it's kind of um, the consistency of, I would say yogurt, because then it's thin enough to move around on your palette, on your uh, canvas, but it doesn't drip. Or maybe it's like face cream. 
that kind of consistency is nice. I don't know that I'm ever gonna get that really bright, bright green. So I do have some green that's kind of Kermit the Frog green. Might work. And I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna use a medium flat brush. And then what I'm gonna do is on one side of the medium flat brush, I have green. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of white on the other side, just so that I can get contrast on one side. And what that does is you'll see that there's darker green and lighter green and white kind of all um, coexisting on the same brush stroke. So I'm gonna start up here and just kind of show you what I mean. If I, if I have white on one side, or on the bottom and green higher up, just on two different parts of my brush, then when I put down a dab, I get these streaks. And that's what I'm going for because I'm trying to make it look like crystals. And so if I have those streaks, then it looks a little like crystals. And then I'm gonna build down to make a pyramid shape. So I've got a little white on my brush. I've got a little green so that I get those crystal shapes. And I'm gonna try to make them a little, just um, like the rectangles, skinny rectangles, that's what I'm going for. and I'm just gonna take my time and go slow. Later, I'll come in and put sparkles on them, so that should help a bit. I'm trying to pull straight down. I'm not always such a great so good at that. But each time I pick up a little more green on my brush on one side, a little more, bit more white on the other. And then I overlap at the base of one crystal and pull it down. So mine are several inches long. And I'm trying to go for a triangular or kind of pyramid shape. I just added a little bit more blue to one side of it because mine were looking a little cactusy or a lot can't see. So I just add a little bit darker green to mix up, mix it up a bit. And I'm happier with that. But you might need to play around a bit to see what you like. Definitely gives it a little more variety in the emeralds. How 
How is that working for you? Pretty good. Oh, good. It's not like anything I've ever done before. I'm using a much smaller canvas, so I'm trying not to go too wide with it. Awesome. I've painted this before, but I don't remember doing it this way. I can't really remember how I did it. Every time I, you do a painting, you just have to kind of figure it out. I do like adding some darker into it. Yeah. And then you can just pull those straight down until the end of your sky, your, yeah, where your sky starts. And of course, we'll cover that, um, you know, with some other things later. My background dried pretty quickly, so I'll just tell you the next part, but I don't expect you to be anywhere near that. Um, the next part, I'm just gonna take a small round brush, and at the top of each one of those emeralds, I'm just gonna make it flatter and more square with a little frosting of white at the top. Huh. Just kind of makes it a little more I don't know, it defines the top and it makes it look a little more 3D somehow. It does make mine look a little more crystal-like rather than pickles, because so far I was getting pickles. <laughs> or asparagus spears. And that was a round tip? Yeah, I'm using a small round. And just giving each one of these, just kind of squaring it off at the top with a little, little white. Bringing my asparagus spears under control a bit. And I'm balancing my uh, hand, I'm steadying my hand by putting my pinky on the dry spots. So I, I'm using my pinky kind of like a tripod to balance my hand. Not a tripod, but a base, a, yeah, a brace rather. Now I have cut asparagus spears. <laughs> Context is everything, right? Great.
And if it's easier for you to get to the other side, you could flip it. Oh, clever. Now she tells me. It looks like on this one, she curved them down a little bit. So it almost looks like, mm -hmm. like, a, uh, like a hemisphere or a, you know, a lemon wedge shape. Um, I'm not sure why, but some of them look like that. Not all of them, it's pretty inconsistent. Actually. The outer edges, yeah. I guess it makes the top look a little rounder. I mean, flatter and uh, conical, like the, the emerald jewel is more cone-like. So if you have any glitter at home, you can always, uh, while your paint's still wet, you can always put glitter on top of it and uh, you know let it dry on it. Um, or you can just wait till it's dry and then um, put glitter glue on it. You can get glitter glue at Hobby Lobby's Michael, I mean Hobby Lobby Michael's or um, even at the dollar store they have some glitter glue. But this painting does look pretty cool with some glitter glue on it. And if you wanna go in and put a darker green or a different shade of green at all, like, you know, if you wanna stripe any of them, now would be the time, you know? Okay. Just uh, adding little highlights or shadows or a little more color. After you get your white tops on, just use your own judgment and decide if you want to add any anything else.
When you get all your caps on, I would recommend looking at your painting from about five feet away so that you can really see it. I'm noticing this one has a few really small ones in the front. So in, since I already have these painted on, I'm just gonna add some little end caps to mine to make it look like there's a few shorter ones. Um, but it's kind of hard to see that from close up. And the only way I could see that I needed those was to look at my camera, which makes things look a little farther away. So it's a good idea if you can to go back a few feet, take a look, just make sure you have what you want. Yeah. 
That makes a difference. I'm putting mine on these caps kind of randomly so that they're all not all the same exact height. I don't know that it matters. Um, so again, another judgment thing, I think. But these look pretty random. Yeah. kind of funny. I always have to do more than whatever, whatever it is we're doing, I always have to do more. It's kind of like my signature thing, you know, if it's, if there's 50 leaves, I'll put 500. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I just do it. If a few is good, more must be better. <laughs> <laughs> I think I might've mentioned to you, I grew up in a family of nine kids and I think that was the lesson. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> after you get, after you're 80% happy with your, um, uh, with your Emerald City, we're going to let that dry before we put sparkles on. There's a few sparkles in the shape of asterisks, but we don't want to mess up what's already wet. Okay, so I'm going to take that emerald green that I have left over and I'm mixing more blue into it to make it a little deeper color. And that's what's going to be here in the foothills of this enchanted city. The path is gonna go right down. It's gonna start in the center of the painting and it's gonna curve and go off center. But I just wanna tell you that so you can kind of get an idea where your, um, your center will be, okay? And the only reason that matters is when you're ready, you can put in some foothills starting from the center and then they go up higher on the side. And they're just a deeper, a deeper, darker shade of emerald. But then right in the center, that's where the um, yellow brick road will end. And the foothills are just curvy lines getting taller as they go up. And that just brings our bottom together so that we don't have to worry about the bottom of the emeralds. We don't have to fuss over it.
actually, it's kind of interesting. She, she put a bunch of it as an underpainting under these red flowers, which I oh. didn't notice until now. Yeah. Huh. So I think I want to follow her lead actually. And I'm just going to kind of put in a little more green. As long as I have some, I'm not going to put it in solid, but I'm going to put a little on each side. And then my red flowers will fill in the rest of the space. The poppies. Just get a little green underpainting in some areas. I like the grass between the poppies. When you say poppies when you're painting this, you have to say poppies. <laughs> In a very sleepy kind of way. Right. And this green's kind of random. And take your time. I know I showed you a lot. I'm just going to slurp my tea. And if it's too rude, let me know. <laughs> you can hear it. And I'm gonna paint the bottom of my painting on the sides green. I can always put red on them over top if I want, but that just makes it easy. You could also paint it red later, whatever is easier. You're painting your world, whatever you like. And watch for flying monkeys. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm gonna take a little bit of white on my tiny brush and a little bit of yellow. I wanted the yellow to show up, but I'm just adding a little bit and I'm just gonna sketch on my yellow brick road. And so it curves, it starts at a point in the middle and then it curves down and out and then back in. And so the more curvy you make your yellow brick road, I think the cooler it looks, but that's up to you. I would not make it straight. Yeah. So I'm gonna curve a little bit coming out of my, where it goes to the Emerald City. And then I'm gonna curve out and then in and then out again.
And I can always tweak that. If I don't like it, I can always make it larger. Now would be a good time. If you wanna make it larger, now would be a good time. It's harder to make it smaller later. But you can always make it larger. But the key is at the top, it's really, really, really skinny. And then down here, it's a lot wider. So I'm gonna to have to remember how skinny it's supposed to be down there. And then I might need to make a few passes down to remember, uh, to, to tell, remind myself how much wider it has to be down here. It's basically like the shape of a witch's hat, but kind of more wiggly. It, or another uh, thing is if you ever ate a bugle, yeah, uh, snack bugle, <laughs> kind of like that. Wiggly. But it's a lot wider down at the base and then it gets thinner, thinner, thinner. And we can also always doctor that. I'm just gonna fill it in a little bit with yellow, even though I'm gonna go back in later and put bricks. Um, I can just scribble it in with just straight old yellow for now, just so I know what I'm working with. And then also if I see it filled in and I don't like the shape, I can always paint over it. It's also the shape of the twister. I noticed on this one, it goes off to the side more and I went down a little bit straighter, but I'm not worried. I'm, I'm gonna live with it. My rule of thumb is 80%. If I'm 80% happy, I'm gonna leave it alone. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna take a skinny, this uh, real small detail brush. This is a round. And then I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna pick up some white paint on the tip of it. And then I'm just gonna identify three good places. Three, you know, could be more. An odd number is always nice um, for a sparkle. And the way we're gonna make our sparkles, you just touch the top of one of your emeralds, wherever you think it should sparkle. So let's say I want to sparkle here, just touch it. And then from a center point, I'm going to flick up, I'm going to flick down, I'm going to flick out, flick out to the other side, and then flick from the diagonals to make an asterisk. Okay. It just adds a little sparkler on there. And I'm gonna, you know, put a few of them. Since I have so many emeralds, I might put five. It's kind of nice to do an odd number, uh, just so it doesn't look symmetrical. But always start from a center point and flick out. The reason you flick out instead of in is um, because you'll have more paint on your brush when you first start. So you want that to be in the center. And then as you flick out, your, uh, the flicks get pointier on the ends. That makes sense, right? Yep, it does. And then you could just kind of put them wherever you think they might look nice. Or wherever you have a little blob you want to cover. <laughs> 
exactly. And you can put as many or as few as you want. I don't think anyone's really going to count them. Make sure you keep cleaning your brushes, okay? Okay. I can't remember if it was you that asked me this or someone else that I painted with. Um, they asked me if that glug, glug, glug was me drinking. That was me. <laughs> makes me laugh now every time I clean my brushes. <laughs> That's what it sounded like. <laughs> it's been a bad year, but not that bad. Yeah, really. <laughs> I um, was doing a Zoom meeting with my book club, uh -huh. and I was pouring some wine into a glass out of the bottle, and you know, it was off camera and it did do the glug, glug, glug. And it's like, okay, <laughs> yes, that's wine. And no, it's really not that much. <laughs> it just sounds that bad coming out of the bottle. <laughs> Okay, well, I'm pretty sure there's some pots of gold in there because those came out, but that's okay. <laughs> Pots of gold in where? In the Emerald City. Oh, yeah. Because they're. All right. So, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take a medium flat brush. And remember how we did the emeralds where we had green on one side and white on the other, just so we can get a little stripiness going on? Mm -hmm. We're going to do the same thing with our yellow and red. Oh. Because I don't want it to be too solid. I want it to just be kind of marbly. And that's how we're going to do our bricks. And so down here where it's really close to us by our feet, if we're in the painting, <laughs> I want to pull fairly big bricks. They sh and if it's too red, you can always go back in and tap in some more yellow. But they're bigger down here because that's where we're standing. And then when you load your brush, just, you know, keep it um, so that sometimes you're dipping in yellow, sometimes you're dipping in red. So we get that kind of stripey look. And they don't have to be perfect. 
these for sure aren't perfect. But then as they go up, we've got to make them smaller. So the biggest ones are in the first row. And then they're going to have to get smaller as I go. Which is a little bit tricky, but we'll figure it out. At some point, I'll need to paint with the side of my brush instead of the thicker part to get a smaller brick. And if it goes off your path a little bit, that's okay, because we're going to cover all that area with red flowers anyway. So we're not going for solid red, we're going for like stripy yellow and red. Because it is supposed to be the yellow brick road. Right. But if it was yellow, they wouldn't really show up too well. As you go higher up the road, go to a smaller brush for smaller bricks. And if you want to, you could take that teeny tiny brush and you could add a tiny bit of black to the tip and you could just make a line here and there, but it'd have to be a pretty thin line just to kind of accentuate some of the bricks. I would just avoid the uh, pattern where you'd have to do every single one in an outline, just kind of make it a little more random if you wanna do that. It just adds a little more shadows and texture to it totally optional. Or you can make some yourself some brown and do that. That might be a little more subtle. Brown is made with mixing a little yellow, a little red, and a little blue. And that's less intimidating. Yeah. Just gives these bricks a little more definition, a little more sh shadowing, more contour, but we definitely aren't going for perfect anything because it's a brick path. And we know that bricks are not perfect. It's your Emerald City. You should make it exactly the way you want it. Or at least feel free to play. Just, um, I would just resist the urge to making anything look perfect. It's not supposed to be a totally perfect painting. It's supposed to be, you know, the flowers are definitely impressionistic.
always good not to not to have to be locked into too much detail. Because then you have to make it consistent throughout. So be consistently inconsistent. Exactly. And if you look at it and it's too busy or too much or whatever, you can always just make a wash out of yellow and water and just kind of brush over anything that you want to calm down a bit. Good. So we're going to pick up straight red on a medium brush. And we're going to do an underpainting under the flowers just to put a solid base of red so that we don't have to paint 10 million flowers. Uh -huh. I'm only going to paint about 8 million. <laughs> and I'm going to avoid the green areas. I'm just going to go around them. That might overlap a little bit, but general idea is I'm just going to fill in all the white areas with a thin coat of red, just so I can then put some detailed flowers in there, but not take a hundred years doing it. So you're painting all the way out with the red. Um, what do you mean out? To the side? Uh, oh, no, you're not going. I thought you were going all the way to the green on your right, but. Yeah, yeah, or, actually. Oh, okay. okay. Right up to it. Going all that in. Yep, any place that's um, uh, white in the grassy areas, we're just going to put in green. I mean, red, sorry. Red. But I'm trying green. not to overlap too much with the red and the green because if you overlap red and green a lot, you get brown. Uh, so I'm just, you know, taking my time and just putting it in the white areas as best I can. So I'm gonna take a little bit of black on a small brush, on a tiny brush, and I'm gonna mix a little bit of black into some of my red. Just a tiny, tiny amount. Don't take too much, just a tiny amount. And what I'm doing is I just wanna make some darker red with it. 
more like a brick red. Like a, like a wine color almost. Like a cranberry. But it just takes a little bit of black to do that, usually. Again, depends on exactly the kind of paints you're using. Every manufacturer is different and crimson is different than magenta. But I'm just going for like a, a deeper red. Blood red, cranberry red, something like that, wine. That general, general idea. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take that and we're gonna just make little circles in our field. And the farther back we go, the smaller they are. And I'm just kind of spinning my brush a little bit. And this takes a little bit of time. These are all each little individual flowers. And if you don't, if it's boring and you don't want to do too many, make them bigger. Why not? You can also just kind of plop them on. That's working well for me in my round brush. Just plopping. That's easier, quicker. But don't stick your hand on a wet canvas. Sorry? Don't stick your hand on a wet canvas. Yeah. If you do, just stick out your pinky in a dry spot to help your hand a bit. But I'm just dropping on some little, way back there, they're small. When I get closer, I'm gonna actually circle on some circles. But way back there, they're teeny tiny little guys. Try not to get sleepy in the poppies. Yeah, really. <laughs> and as we come forward, we need to make them a little bit bigger. And we could do that with the same brush or use a different brush or just pop harder or circle, whatever works for you. I'm loading my brush more and pushing harder. That's giving me bigger ones, but whatever, whatever works for you. Okay. After we get these on, we're gonna make a pink and we're gonna pop on pinks, not as many, but ever so often a pretty pink one. So it won't just look like this color. Okay. We'll have a little bit of variety. Kind of looks like this painting has a really bad rash. Yeah.
There's no hurry. Take your time. When you are ready though, we're just gonna do the same thing with pink, but I'm not gonna put on as many of the pink ones. Okay. Just kind of here and there. Just kind of adds a pretty pop of pink. Pop of poppy. And I don't wanna do too many because I am gonna come back in with those pinks and just use the tip of my brush to put a black center. So you don't wanna over, overdo it and have a lot of work. Unless you do. So I'm not putting as many pink ones on. And my red ones are so little wet, so they're just kind of mingling and mixing and having a party together. Oh, pink pops. So that way we've got highlights and shadows on our flowers. To make your pink, you just did uh, new red and white, or did you add white to this darker red? I did a new red and white. Okay. Thanks for asking. That's a good question. I should have said that. Yeah, just it'll give you a little cleaner pink. Okay. Another layer of rash. <laughs> <laughs> on this very infected uh, field. I'm just kind of plopping them on. I'm not making the circles. The circles were taking way too long for me. Yeah, that's what I finally figured out. Plopping is better. The technical word for that is stippling. I like popping. Oh, oh, oh. It's important to use a round brush though, because a, a flat brush would give you little rectangles and we want little circles. Okay. Thank you. 
Oops, sorry. Forgot to put my do not disturb on. So the last step of those flowers, and we want to not worry about doing too many of them, but just in the bigger ones near the front, just dip your, the end of your stick of your smallest little brush in black and just put a few little dots in the bigger ones. But I wouldn't put it in every single one because even even with poppies, like the wind is blowing and you can't always see the centers, right? Okay. And so it just kind of suggests that, yeah, those are flowers with the center dot, but some of them, the center dot is not visible because the petals are, you know, all over the place. We just want to give the impression of poppies without having to make every one of our dots a poppy. Okay. That makes sense, right? Yep. So more in the front where they're big and kind of as, as you get farther back, just kind of abandon it. Kind of gradually stopping as they go farther back. I'm just putting them in the pink ones because if I did them in the red ones, it would take me all day. But do whatever you think looks good. The attention's not going to be here. Most people are going to look at it and they're just going to, their eyes going to be pulled right up that yellow brick road. Okay. And take your time, I'm just tweaking. Just let me know when you've got it. My red's not very red, so I might come in and pop on a little bit more red, but that's because I use magenta, kind of a wimpier red.
this this painting has a lot of steps. Yeah. But so we're almost done with this, and then the trees will be relatively easy. But trees. before we're done oh, with this, yeah, there's some trees on the side. <laughs> um, before we finish this, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take that tiny brush and I'm going to wake up my green a little bit with a few drops of water. I just want a little bit of green. Doesn't matter what shade, doesn't even matter, whatever is wet, whatever you can get to wake up, a little bit of water. And I'm just going to flick on a few little stems coming out of the green. Really? Each little green area gets a few little stems sticking up. Not perfect. We're not looking for anything perfect. Just to add a little bit of stems in our green. We don't have to go back into the foothills. That's too far. But just, just adding a little bit of vertical motion in this a little bit. Just here and there like little clumps of grass or stem. And if they go over our little flowers, that's fine. We don't want those little green patches looking like little putting greens. They're supposed to be uh, some kind of plant or stems or something. I'm just doing it kind of quickly. Anywhere you think it might benefit from a couple of blades of grass or tufts. If it were me, this is not my original painting, I would not have put in this much detail. There's yeah. quite a bit of detail on this. And I don't think it's really necessary, but I do want to honor the original artist um, and their vision. So if they've got little tufts of grass or stems, then far be it for me to say they shouldn't be there. I didn't do many, but I got a few in there. Yeah, okay. All right. I don't really know that it adds much, but okay. All right, so all we have left are some trees, and they're going to be easy, fast trees. Good, because trees are normally a pain in the butt. Yeah, no, these are easy and fast. So I'm going to take a medium flat brush. I'm going to put it in my dirty white because my white paint is quite dirty now, but I don't care, that's fine. And then I'm going to start over here. I'll start here and then I'll go up with the trees. I'm gonna put a lot of pressure at the bottom, a whole lot, a whole lot. And then I'm gonna pull up and then 
turn my brush about a quarter turn just so it gets skinnier. I can go over that again. And it did pick up all the other colors that were still wet and I don't care, that's fine. And I deliberately didn't make it too straight. This one it comes from all the way down. And as it goes up, it gets thinner and thinner and it's crooked like every good tree should be crooked. And if you wanna give it a side branch, go for it. But it's not a perfect tree. It's, it's very imperfect. You see, I don't even care about the detail in it because we're going to cover it all with foliage anyway. And no one even notices the trees when they see this painting. All they <laughs> Just like me, I said, what trees? I don't see any trees. Yeah. So they're not worth fussing over because no one ever sees them. If I asked 100 people, is there a tree in this painting, if they weren't looking at it after they'd already seen it for an hour, they'd say no. They don't even notice them. Every, everyone says the same thing. I didn't know there were trees in that painting. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Real, real uh, put a lot of pressure at the bottom so you get a nice wide base. And then as you go up, turn your brush just a quarter turn and make your tree not straight. And then you can go through it again to you know add a little more paint. But very imperfect. And then you can also come from in the trunk and Paint any branches coming out if you want. That works. And I'm gonna put two more and I'll just show you where I'm gonna put them. I'm gonna put one right here where that little line is. Then I'm gonna put another one right about here where that little line is. But the ones as they go farther back or higher up, they're gonna be a little smaller. Little, I'm not gonna put quite as much pressure at the base. And twist it so you get a little curve. And notice how I didn't really care if I picked up any extra paint on it. In fact, that just gives interesting reflections on my tree. And this one's a little thinner. I, I turned my brush a little bit earlier. And this is a medium flat brush again. But by turning it just a half a turn, it gets skinnier. And then coming out from the trunk, I can put a Few little skinny branches. On the other side, I just need one more. Because it just doesn't need the exact same thing on that side. So on this side, maybe right about here. Real fat, real lot of pressure at the base and then coming up, quarter turn twist. And from the side of my brush, a few little branches. Nothing about these trees is perfect. They are very haphazard kind of trees. And I made a big boo-boo there. I made a real fat branch, so I'll just cover that with, all we have to do is pop, pop some uh, colors on it. Thank you. 
but I just want you to see how imperfect those trees are because I'm already thinking this painting has a lot of detail and I don't want to fuss anymore. Okay. <laughs> if you want to, you can fuss and make imperfect trees. To me, the attention's all here. Right. These just kind of create a frame. And then after I get those on, I'm just gonna put a little bit of black paint. I watered it down so it's more like ink on my tiny little brush. Thank and then you. I can go in and I can put little scars on my trees or you can draw some lines. Maybe draw a shadow on the outside, you know, on the side opposite the glowing emeralds but not perfect. Nothing I'm doing is going to be perfect. It's just adding a little, you know, scars here and there. Little skin knees. If trees had a skin knee, that's what they'd look like. Where the animals scarred it up a bit. Some really thin little black lines or broken up outline on the back, nothing perfect. I have black paint on my brush, but if I also picked up white paint, you know, you could just kind of do it that way. Just a little bit of black, a little bit of white, just kind of messing it up. So there's little gray scars on my tree. However you do it, just messing it up so the trunks have scars. These are like aspens or birches. So then for the leaves, they're basically green leaves, but notice they have a lot of texture and variety in the leaves. Mm -hmm. And the way you can get that look the easiest is by first, this is gonna sound crazy, first put on blue leaves. And my blue is dirty and it just automatically had green in it. Son of a gun, what do you know? I have a little pop of yellow sitting on top of my blue. But I'm putting on blue first. And I'm not putting them directly on the branches, just kind of around, around the tree trunks, willy nilly, random. And then a little bit more kind of going, so it kind of forms a frame around our Emerald City, like, ah. Uh. So that first layer, some blue leaves. And if you're lucky, you'll have some yellow just sitting near it and you accidentally pick it up like I did. But with impressionistic paints, you can do blue leaves and they're totally believable because we're gonna pop yellow over them while they're still dry. 
and then it will mix and mingle and they'll make some little yellow baby, some green baby leaves. So now I'm going to, then I can go into my yellow. And if you want to use pre-mixed green, go for it. But I find if you just do blue and while it's still wet, pop yellow over it, it automatically makes green leaves. So it's kind of a lazy way. And then it also adds some shadows the blue or like the lead, the shadows behind the yellow bright leaves. That's why I love more impressionistic paintings. You can do stuff like that. Get away with it. And if you have a spot on your tree you don't like, just cover it up. The other nice thing about having the blue on there and then yellow on top is it's not perfectly mixed. So it's not just more the same of the Emerald City. Yeah. Have a little bit more contrast maybe. And if you want to make them more fall, you could also put a layer of orange leaves on top if you want. If you want to work that hard. <laughs> Last, I'm going to use put on a layer of white ones, just right on top of my yellow and my blue, just letting it all mix in together. Just indicating some sunlight. Fluttering those leaves around. Little pops, little stipples. Since these trees are in an angle, my leaves need to be in an angle too. So there's the tree trunks, there's the leaves. And I'll have to do the same thing over here. Just mimic the angle of where the trees are in your leaves, the lines of your leaves. So that's an ang that angle is the same as that angle of the leaves. And that is it. I'm just gonna wait for that to dry a little bit before I put on my sparkles. You've already done your white. Yeah, I see it. Yeah, uh, you know, you might wanna step back a few feet and just kind of see where you put them. I'm looking, I looked into the camera so I can see, I just want this kind of this arch to mimic 
you know, the shape of the ah. <laughs> yeah, emerald sparkle. That's really all that the trees are there for is just to create kind of a frame. I could have made them smaller and skinnier, but remember when I said I was overdo everything? <laughs> what I do. I stop fighting it. I just know that about myself. I just deal with it. Just who you are. And take your time, don't rush. Just take as long as you need. Okay, I'm just, uh, um, just popping a few blades of grass over the bottoms of the trees, just kind of plant some bit. We've got some green in there anyway. Pretty haphazardly, nothing fancy.
So I clean my uh, flat medium brush, okay. medium flat brush. And then I'm gonna first, um, so I have this liquid glitter, it's glitter glue, but mine is white. You said yours is green, mine's white. Yeah. But mine will dry clear. Um, so yeah. I'm gonna take a very clean medium brush and it will mess up any wet paint. So you wanna avoid putting it over any wet paint. But I'm going to sparkle up my yellow brick road. Oh. You don't have to if you don't want to, but why not? Mm -hmm. I need to see how green this looks before I put green yeah. on top of my yellow. Mm -hmm. Before you commit? Yeah. <laughs> It's probably in a glue base, a water water based glue base. Uh -huh. So if it's, if it's too thick and too much, you could always water it down a little bit, I think. We've had the liquid glitter um, oh, yeah. in, in different colors. Now we just go for this one, it goes on clear and it's easier, but easier just have one kind, but um, We've had it of the different colors and we were able to water it down if it was too much. Okay, yeah, I might need a little bit of water here. So I sparkled up my yellow brick road. Okay. And my sparkles won't show until it's dry. And while you're doing your road, I'm gonna I'm gonna put some of my sky. It's mine is clear, so mine will kind of make sense to do that. Might not make sense to do that with green though. I don't I don't know. Yeah. When mine dries, it'll just look like light. Kind of. Are you covering the whole thing or are you just? I am, but you know how, how I am. <laughs> well, <laughs> good point. <laughs> Would cautious, wise people do it? Maybe not. <laughs> well, I think I might put some like back around my trees. There you go. Wherever you want sparkle. Since it has I'm, of course, I'm not going to put in any in the foliage so much because I want to highlight, I want my eye to go up the sparkles into this sparkle. Yeah. But if you do your, since yours is green mm -hmm. and you do in the trees, it just makes your, tr your forest look more magical. So it's just a different, different approach, that's all. Actually, the green watered down good. I think will look okay even in the sky because it's just the emerald from the from the city. So just be sure that your brush is really, really clean. And then also just know that wherever you put it, because there's water in it, it's going to reactivate that paint and make it wet. Okay. So you want to be careful and very thoughtful about where you put it so you don't smear wet paint. Okay. So I'm, I've been stalling and now I see that those little touches I put in are finally dry. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put my glitter glue over my emeralds. And at first it's gonna look white because this looks white at first, but then as it dries, it'll just sh be shimmery. But depending on the kind of glitter you use, you know, it'll look different and it will dry differently. But you're just painting right up the asparagus. Oh, wow, it, yours really looks white. Like what? Yours really looks white. It does, it's gonna dry. 
I, I've used this glitter many times and I think the first time I panicked that it was so yeah. white, but it, it dries clear. When I hand this kind of glitter glue to people in the studio in, for in, inside classes, they all are like, are you sure? Really? <laughs> but it's like Elmer's glue, right? That, that dries clear too. Yep. And you can see um, that gl glitter is on this painting. And so you can kind of see it if I move the painting around. Oh, yeah. Uh huh. Cool. Yeah. So if I ever own ruby slippers, I'll have to cover them with this glitter. Yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> And then when you're finished, just, um, you know, the drill, just gonna pick up my small brush and then somewhere in all of this exciting scene, I'm gonna just use any color that I want that will contrast and show up. And then I'll sign my painting probably in the bottom right hand corner. I cheat and use a Sharpie. Pardon me? I cheat and use a Sharpie. Sharpies work great. This is February of Something starting to green up, starting to dry a bit. Thank you for painting with me today.